Bonnie Dundee marched the men of the Black Watch. It was the unit's first trade before a new CO, and the Highlanders from Montreal showed that in their long months of training, they had lost none of their smartness on parade. The occasion was an Easter Sunday drumhead service. Present was Brigadier K.J. Blackadder, a former commanding officer who brought the unit over from Canada. Strong Presbyterian voices echoed around the hollow square, bringing a breath of Canada to a windswept corner of England. While Brigadier Blackadder took the salute, the battalion marched proudly by. Rich indeed in tradition is this old regiment, oldest of Canada's Highland units, and the only Canadian regiment in the last war to have three battalions in the line. One of the last appearances of the late Major General H.L.N. Salmon, M.C., was at his inspection of divisional medical units. Through the early morning mist marched the men of the field ambulances, the field dressing stations, and the hygiene section. With typical thoroughness, the GOC made a very detailed inspection. Accompanying him were Brigadier J.A. Linton, Brigadier E.A. McCusker, M.C., Lieutenant Colonel G. Kitching, and Lieutenant Colonel W. J. Mook. As each unit was inspected, certain personnel were detailed to follow out and report to various officers of the divisional staff who conducted TOETs. It was a real inspection that took the whole day to complete. And when General Salmon was finished, he knew that the medicals of his division were at peak efficiency and ready for action. The late General Salmon was also on hand for the Army soccer final. When he officially opened the game, he started a bitter battle between the Seaforth and the engineers from Army troops. Both teams had won their way through preliminary playdowns in their own formations and showed plenty of form. It was a close and thrilling match, but the Highlanders from British Columbia were just a little too good for the Sappers and won by a score of 3 to 1. After the game, General Salmon made the awards. The winning Seaforth received individual gold medals and the championship cup. While soccer bowed out, baseball bowed in. The crowd song to Haringey Stadium, where the London International Baseball League was officially opened when Brigadier General P.B. Rogers, U.S. Army, pitched the first ball. The first game brought together U.S. Army headquarters and CMHQ. Both teams were a little shaky at first, but soon settled down to business and put up a good game. Maybe some of the spectators didn't know just what it was all about, but pop and potato chips gave them the real baseball atmosphere. beaten by 7-2, the eight-team league got off to a great start, and it certainly looks as though there'll be some real ball played in London this summer. Canadian troops, who were farmers and civilized, have been spending their leave studying farming conditions in England. Many of them paid a visit to the King's Farm at Windsor to see a farm run in the Royal Manor. There were many a blue ribbon bull on display, and they were truly magnificent beasts.
the visit off, there was a royal milkmaid and a bottle of royal milk. Lieutenant General McNaughton was on hand to present special watch fobs to men of the tunneling company's RCE who had served in Gibraltar. The fobs had been sent from Canada by the Honorable Mr. C.D. Howe, Minister of Munitions and Supply, and were in recognition of a tough job well done. More than 300 of them were awarded, amongst others to Sergeant G. McChesney from Timmins, Ontario. Lieutenant A.O. Ames from Nelson, B.C. And Lieutenant J.B. Kirk from Vancouver. And this is the key for service at Gibraltar. When Private Charmaine Sampson arrived in England recently, she was greeted by her father, Lieutenant General E.W. Sampson. Private Sampson is an ordnance clerk. And the enthusiasm of the new quack draft was not dampened either by the weather or by the weight of their kit bags. At recent royal investitures, military medals were awarded to Private G. Jolet, R. Venier, and C. Lafleur, all of the FMR, and all from Montreal. While an FMR officer, Lieutenant A.A. A. Masson, also from Montreal, received the military cross. Lance Corporal Johnny Lorraine, RCE from Ottawa, received the British Empire Medal. On Good Friday, the Royal Winnipeg Rifles celebrated an anniversary. A special service was held at which were present Major General R.F.L. Keller and Brigadier T.G. Gibson. The occasion marked the regiment's 60th birthday, and in those 60 years, the little black devils have won a reputation second to none. At a recent off to graduation, General McNaughton saw the first class of quack cadets. They were the first women officers to receive their certificate from the hand of the GOC in C. The girls had worked and trained with the men cadets, and all together they put up a fine show. Veterans of another great war gathered in London to remember Vimy, a distinguished veteran, Major General the Honorable P.J. Montague, senior officer at Canadian Military Headquarters, inspected them. They were the men of the Canadian Veterans Guard, old soldiers who had not faded away, but who have returned to serve with their sons. They were members of the Canadian branch of the British Legion, men who proudly bore standards that testified to their service in a great cause a cause for which American troops, too, had fought and who were also represented on parade. As they marched together to Blitz St. Margaret's beside Westminster Abbey, they symbolized the union of two generations, the union of banners that stood for the strength of an empire, a people, a race, an occasion commemorating Vimy Ridge, a day at once sad and honorable in Canadian history, a day that all soldiers are proud to remember. That day in London, they formed a part of a great new Canadian cavalcade that has joined forces with Britain and the United Nations. They are here again to finish a job begun over 30 years ago, the job of ridding the world of an evil thing, and it's a job that with God's help and some dry gunpowder, they and their sons will be doing soon. <laughs>